So I am joined on Skype now by Loredana Bessone. Um, hello. Hi, John. Ready to go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Loredana is the head of the European Space Agency's Instructional Technologies Special Skills Training and Exploration Unit. Now, Loredana, that is a very cool title. It's even cooler than my title, frankly. Um, what does it actually mean? Oh, it's just long. It's not cool, but, uh, well, it has a few things. I do a lot of different things. Instructional technologies is anything that has to do with teaching, so teaching people like you. Um, so I teach instructors on how to teach people like you to go to space. Uh -huh. uh, special skills are all the special skills that you need to go to space, robotics, spacewalks, uh, working well in a team, survival. So that's uh, what I teach too, and, of course, to go into exploration. So. It sounds like a very cool job, and in fact, I know a little bit about your job, so I know that it is a very cool job. Um, hopefully you know that I am on this mission this weekend as part of NASA's uh, Space Apps Challenge, this global hack event, to hack my way into space. Um, and I'm asking experts for their advice. You are one of those experts. Your job, as I understand it, what you've just said, is to prepare astronauts for the extreme conditions, environments of space. So I have... Um, about, I, I think, sort of 14 hours remaining until my deadline to get into space. Now, I'm assuming that's not the amount of time you would normally want to train someone. So what are the most important things that I need to achieve in that time? You need to know exactly what you will need to do when you get there. Those are the very important things. Once you know, memorize and make a mental simulation of all the steps that you need to go through. Make sure that you're relaxed and you visualize everything working perfectly. Make sure you visualize what you'll need to do to react to emergencies, how you need to communicate with your teams, what you will need to do in order to make sure that all your systems go well, and then relax. Okay, that is excellent advice. Um, how, I mean, I'm going to quite an extreme environment. Um, how, how am I going to find, how am I going to relax up there, Loredana? Adapt to it. How do you relax when you go underwater? How do you relax when you fly? How do you relax when you go to a forest? You just feel it and then you live with it. So don't try to conquer it. That will not work. Live with it. Live with it, yes. Okay. Smell it, feel it. Listen to it. Listen to your gut feelings and move in it. Cool, thank you. Um, I spoke earlier today with Alex Kumar, Dr. Kumar, um, who's at the Concordia station in Antarctica. He says hello. Um, because he joked that you certified him to go there to do that job. He said that Loredana said that I was mad enough. And he said that one of the things I absolutely had to do before I went was to speak to you to get certified myself. <laughs> now, um, so I guess, what are the special qualities that you're looking for in those people when you're sending them to those sorts of environments? Well, first of all, I don't certify people, I train them. Uh, they will get certified by other people than me. Um, but sure, they need to be ready to go somewhere like that. So you wouldn't, if you are panicking, it wouldn't be good for your colleagues. But you need to also respect your colleagues, be able to talk to them, um, work with them, work hard with them, of course. Uh, you need to be able to be ready to adapt, I say it before, to very difficult conditions, to diff people that are not like you. So you might not like them, but you have to live with them. And they might not like you, so you need to be ready to maybe not leave your socks around or uh, clean out after you if that annoys others. Uh, just respect them a lot uh, because they have a lot to give to you. And you need to be able to be open and listen a lot. And learn from your errors. Um, everybody will make a lot of mistakes. You will make a lot of mistakes. But that's good. That's good. I think it's fair. Because if you learn from your mistakes, you're going to be smart after that. I agree with you. I think uh, making mistakes, taking risks, as, you know, while no one's dying, is oh, yeah. the best way to learn. As long mm -hmm. as, like you say, you do learn from, from making those mistakes and improve. Um, those qualities that you're talking about, which are about uh, listening, uh, working with people, being prepared to adapt and to change your own behavior in response. That's a, 
difficult. It seems to me like a difficult thing to do all the time to have to be that aware and to be able to change. So, is that something that you can teach people, or is it something that I just have to have in my personality? Oh, you learn that for sure. Um, I'm not sure I am going to be able to teach you, but you can learn it by yourself. If you're motivated to learn it, first of all, that's the first thing. You need to want to change. You need to want to be able to live properly with people. And then you need to try and realize what are the things that maybe annoy people of you. Um, if you listen to what they tell you, um, if you listen to their feedback and listen to what they tell you about uh, their experience about working with you, you can learn a lot about yourself. And from there you go. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I'm pleased to know that I can, you know, learn, uh, or that you believe that I can learn. I, I hope that I'm a good listener as well, and that I like working in teams. I'm feeling a bit nervous about tomorrow because on this occasion, I'm working in pretty much in isolation. I've got some amazing people actually at the Met Office today. That I look. I um, I've been 3D printed. Ooh! Wow. That's and, cool. It is cool, isn't it? You can, maybe can't see that, but it's got my um, initials on it as well, so you know it's me. Wow. So there is maybe a version of me that can go into space as well. Um, but I'm, I'm also an artist, you know, and I'm interested in that attitude. And I've read you quoted in an interview saying that working in microgravity is a bit like ballet. Mm. Now, I'm really interested in what value you think that the arts have in scientific research and space exploration, if any. Well, behind me I have a lot of uh, science fiction books. Um, I think artists have gone to space much earlier than engineers. Um, they have created a lot of the images that we have of uh, moon base, Mars base. I think that's very valuable because if you don't imagine what is up there, you will never try to even find a good, play, a good way of going there. And then I think the more people like you or us, the artists will go to space, the more it will be easy for people that have never gone to space, have never even uh, understood the engineering of space, to actually live it and feel it. Because uh, you're probably much better than engineers like me in describing what is going on up there. So I think artists need to go to space. I'm really pleased to hear that. I also, th I also think you're being a bit modest because I know you are an engineer, an incredibly accomplished uh, scientist, and uh, specialising in psychology, I think, is, is what you do. But you also have a very artistic sentiment. You describe yourself as having being very curious and enjoying finding out about lots of things. Or well, scientists are curious. Yeah, and artists. We're yeah. All, yeah. Well, it's good to be curious. If you're not curious, you're actually not learning. So to learn, you have to be curious. So that's how we're the same, maybe. Artists and scientists having this curiosity, this desire to learn. And I think something very important about artists and scientists working together is that we all share the same desire to fail or to, to learn something new. What's the point at which the way we understand the world right now changes? Oh, and that's yeah. a very exciting way for me to work with the scientists and the engineers to, you know, then... <laughs> um, and this ties in, actually, to, as the Director of Human Spaceflight Operations at the Unlimited Space Agency. Yeah, wow. Um, I, I get asked a lot, ESA, I love it. Um, I get asked a lot about um, why, why should we go into space. Why do you want to go into space, John? You know, what benefit is there to the planet, the civilization, the human beings, by leaving the planet? I don't see us leaving the planet. I see us exploring the rest of space, which uh, it doesn't mean leave the planet. It means going and finding out what's there. Uh, if nobody ever sailed, we wouldn't be able to go around the ocean. If nobody ever tried to fly, we wouldn't be able to go on holiday to the Bahamas. So I think we need to go there to explore it, to know what it is, how it is to live there. Because in microgravity fluids, we don't work in the same way. So we need to experience this to be able to go and live there, a short time, long time, and adapt to it. So knowledge, knowledge is exploration. This is why we're going. 
we, we've always done it. I agree. Uh, I agree with you very strongly, and it's um, it's nice to hear that because there's a lot of uh, people say well, it's too expensive. What's the point? We're doing this thing on Earth. There's people suffering here. But um, speaking to Don Thomas, a uh, NASA astronaut earlier today, he described the Earth as being like spaceship Earth. We're all already in space. We're just like you're saying, exploring some yeah. more of it. So. Um, what advice, Loredana, do you have for some of the younger agents that I work with um, at the Unlimited Space Agency, particularly um, young women and girls, I suppose, from your point of view, your experience of having worked in this industry and in science, what advice do you have for them if they want to get into space? Um, I'd like not to make any distinction between uh, girls or boys because they're all equally qualified and they will all be equally good when they go. So to me, no distinctions. They're just the boys and girls that uh, should be interested, curious, as we said before. Um, go out in the world and explore it. Try to learn it, listen to it, feel it, smell it, understand it, explore it and explain it, adapt to it and try to find the best that they find in this world, use it in order to be able to get ready to go to space because uh, by experiences and studying and learning they will just be ready to go to space. And then get motivated to go because they will be able to go very far away. You think in the future they're going to be able to go very far away, further than we're going now? Oh yes, and I'll envy them for that. Well maybe we can go together. Yeah, but I might be too old when they go. No, the te we'll all be we'll all be cryogenically frozen, and that's, true. All right. that's what I'm relying on. The point at which you know the technology hasn't arrived yet, that the technology will allow me to wait for it to arrive. Oh, we they but they will go very very far. Yes, further than Mars. Um, Tim Peak was talking to me earlier about how uh, it was it, it quite very surprised me, shocked me nearly talking about how we would be making journeys to planets maybe not just in this solar system but beyond our solar system and that is that something that you believe is in the not too distant future um, I cannot make predictions but it is in our future it's amazing you know we're thinking about Voyager too you know only having quite recently left our solar system and the idea that we're thinking about how we can live beyond it is very exciting. Um, Aradana, what is the one piece of advice you need to give me if I'm going to achieve my ambition this weekend of getting into space? Well, make sure that the night before you go, you sleep very tight because you need all your body and mental energy to enjoy and to be ready and attentive for it. Okay, a good night's sleep. A good night's sleep is like the answer to so many things as well, <laughs> not just going to space. Well, there it is. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, your, uh, your thoughts, your, um, your knowledge and your wisdom and for joining me uh, this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure to, to meet and to talk to you. Well, enjoy. Take good pictures. I will. I promise to take these. I am going to get the pictures. Everyone wants them and I have to prove that I get there as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Loredana, thank you again. Good luck and speak to you again soon, I hope. Yeah, and come back and tell me how it was. I will, definitely. Thank you. So, have a good, nice trip.